I'm going to show you how to do the physics practical on finding the IV characteristics, that is, how does current change with PD for different components. What we're going to be testing today is a resistor, and mine is a 100 ohm resistor. I have my filament lamp here as well, and also a diode, which is this little thing here. What else are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a variable resistor. Now, you will need a variable resistor that has a similar resistance to the resistor that you're testing as well. So this is a one kilo ohm max variable resistor. That's pretty good to use with my 100 ohm resistor. If it's very different, if it's too small, that's usually what the case is, then you won't get good results. We also have a battery or a power supply. You can use that too. That can supply up to about five volts. We have an ammeter. And also, I have my milliamp shunt here as well, which means that I can turn it into a more sensitive ammeter, which we're gonna need for the diode. I have my voltmeter as well, and lots of leads. This is a classic practical that is really fundamental for you being able to understand how these various components work, and you need to know it inside out. So, let's have a look at how we do it. First of all, we need to build our circuit. We're going to start with our battery or our power supply, and we're going to just build one series circuit. So we're going to take a lead and bring it to our variable resistor, and then we're going to attach this to our component. I'm going to test the resistor first. Now, just make sure that one of your leads actually comes from the middle of the variable resistor. If you do it on both ends, then you won't actually get a changing resistance here. So you won't get a changing current. And then we need to hook up our ammeter. Now, ammeters always go in series with the component that we're looking at. So we're just going to take two leads, one from the resistor, and then finally back to the battery. Now, I can see that my ammeter is giving a reading of minus 0.06 amps. And usually when we do practicals with circuits, we tell you not to worry if there's a minus. It's just the same number. It's just the leads are in the wrong way round. But this time, we do want to make sure that we have a positive current, at least a positive current when we have a positive voltage. So I'm just going to swap my leads round in my ammeter to get a reading of plus 0.06 amps. The last thing that always gets added to a circuit is the voltmeter. And the leads from a voltmeter always piggyback across the component that we're looking at. So my two leads from my voltmeter piggybacking into the leads going into the resistor, and it's showing me a voltage of 5.66. And it's positive as well, which is what we want. So just make sure that to begin with, both your current and your voltage are positive. Now, because we're dealing with fairly low currents, 0.06 amps is the maximum that I'm getting here. That's okay, because we only need, say, five readings for the current and the voltage. What I'm going to do is start at zero amps. I'm going to bring my current up to 0.01 amps using the variable resistor, and we're gonna go up in 0.01 amps. What's the voltmeter reading? Well, it's reading exactly one volt, so 1.00. Let's go to one decimal place with our voltage or our potential difference. Next, I'm going to increase the current using the variable resistor to 0 0.02 amps. Again, making sure that it doesn't fluctuate, that it's staying at 0 0.02. I now have a PD of 2.1 volts to one decimal place. You're going to carry on increasing the current until you get five readings. Here are mine, all the way up to 0.05 amps. But we have one more thing to do as well. We don't just want to know what happens with positive currents and potential differences. We want to know what happens with negative values as well. What do you have to do to change the direction of the current flowing through the circuit? Just change the leads round in the battery or the power supply. And as you can see, I now have negative current and a negative PD or voltage as well. It just means that current is flowing in the opposite direction through the circuit. But we are going to repeat the experiment now, starting at minus 0.01 amps, and then going down to minus 0.05 amps. Not a big surprise, the PD at minus 0.01 amps is minus 1.0 volts. 
going down to minus 0.05 amps, this is what my voltages were for those. What you then need to do is plot a graph. And this is one of those times where the y-axis and the x-axis are going to be in the middle of the graph because you need to be able to plot minus values for both the current and the potential difference. Now, which way do you put them round on the graph? This is a little bit of a point of contention. Some people say that you must have current on the y-axis and voltage or PD on the x-axis. Other people say that it's the other way around. Chances are in your exam you will see current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis. That's why it's called an IV graph. Now what can you do with this? Well, as you can see, my points make a nice straight line. And you might know that Ohm's law states that voltage or PD, potential difference, is equal to current times resistance. So if we have a graph of current against voltage, then we should have a straight line if we are dealing with a fixed resistor. Because we have this straight line, we can say that we have a constant gradient. That means that the resistance is constant. Therefore, we can say that this resistor here is an ohmic conductor. That just means that it has a constant resistance, regardless of what current and what PD you have across it. Next, let's check the filament lamp. All I have to do is unplug the leads from my resistor and pop in my lamp instead. Doesn't matter whether you start with positive or negative values, you just need to make sure you do both. So starting with 0.01 amps, I can see that I now have a PD of 0.3 volts across it. I'm just going to get the rest of my results for 0.02 all the way to 0.05 amps. My final result of 0.05 amps, that needs a PD of 3.5 volts in order to push that current through the lamp. So having my negative values as well, here's my plotted graph of current against PD. As you can see, it looks slightly different from the graph that we had for the resistor. What's different about it? Well, it's slightly curved, and it curves towards the end of the graph, both at the positive and the negative ends. So what does this show us? Well, it first of all shows us that resistance isn't constant for this lamp, and so we can't say it's an ohmic conductor. We have to say that it's a non-ohmic conductor. The graph flatten slightly towards the end. That means that as we increase the PD across the lamp, whether positive or negative, we're less able to push current through. The resistance of the lamp is increasing as the current increases. Now, why is this? When current flows through a component, it gets hot. This is because the electrons that are flowing through the component collide with the particles that make it up. However, a resistor, it's made out of a special material that includes silicon, which means that even though it gets hotter, the resistance doesn't change. However, with a filament lamp, as those electrons flow through the metal, they collide with the ions of the metal. What happens though, when the metal gets hotter, the ions vibrate more, and that means the electrons collide more with the ions as they pass through, so they find it harder to go through. So that means the resistance increases. And finally, the diode. Now, this is a little bit trickier. So here I have the diode, and it's in a little holder, and there's my two leads piggybacking on it, going to my voltmeter, and it's all in series with everything else. Now, the difficulty with the diode is getting the PD down to a very low voltage. Now I've changed the output from my battery to three volts. You really don't need a high voltage for the diode experiment. Now the minimum voltage that I can get down to across my diode is 0.55 volts and I get a current of 2.38 milliamps now that I've got my milliamp shunt in here. So let's take this up and see what voltage we get now. So I'm going to increase it to 0 0.60 volts. So a voltage of 0 0.60 volts gets me a current of 7.8 milliamps. So I'm going to take my voltage up and we're going to see what happens to the current. Now that I've done that, let's swap the terminals around on the battery and see what currents we get this time. You can see that I've got a PD of minus basically three volts across the diode but the current is zero. There's no problem with the ammeter or the equipment. It's just because we're using a diode. Diodes are special because they act like one-way streets for current. So our graph should look something like this. We don't actually have 
a negative current on this graph. That's because diodes don't allow it. So for a negative voltage or a negative potential difference, current is going to be zero. In other words, the diode has a very high resistance in that direction. It's only when we get to a certain voltage that we get current increasing. And you can see that with our sharp increase in gradient on the graph. And that sharp increase in gradient shows that the resistance has decreased to basically zero.